at the end of the day, man, you really got to want it. You got to really want it. And I think the problem is, is now with social media before, when I was growing up, I didn't see all these examples of people having cool cars or doing cool shit all the time, like, right? And now with social media, I don't care if you're in like, you know, in the bump middle of nowhere, you can log on to Instagram and see just this whole world of experiences and things. The problem is, it's like, oh, well, these people have it, so I should be able to have it. And it's just like, man, you don't see the work Uh, Deadpool in that movie he says something about how you have like these brief moments of kind of peace until like the next accident happens mm -hmm. right um, and that's just life in general you know it's never going to be complete smooth sailing one of the things that I've noticed about a lot of people is that they let the hardships and the things that happen in their life failure stop them from like Aaliyah said you know dust yourself off and try again right and for me I've just never let anything or anybody prevent me from achieving what I want to achieve. And so I've always had this relentless mentality. And if you say I can't do something, if I fail, if I you know, mess up, it just motivates me even more. I just become even more hungry. And so I've always just had this you know, relentless mentality. I don't take you know, no for an answer. I don't take failure or accept failure at all. And it's just always been kind of in my heart to not give up. There's one thing being homeless, but there's another thing having everything taken away from you, right? So, you know, I worked throughout my teen years, so I had Jordans, I had like cool clothes, rockwear, all this stuff that kids aren't wearing anymore, right? And, um, you know, for me, like, I was literally living out of my car. And so, even though I was homeless, I was still trying to uphold the appearance of everything being okay. When that moment happened, it was like, whoa, this is rock bottom. Because now all my clothes are gone. All the cool shoes, all the things that were material, um, that you know, I tried to fake it until I figured things out were gone now. And not only that, all the, the, the elements. So now rain and snow and all these things can get in the car. So it was like mildewy and smelly. And so I smelled, right? And so for me, in that moment, I understood that, wow, this is, I thought things were bad, but things are really, really bad at this point. And now I can't pretend anymore. I just have to really embrace this. I think a lot of times when we're going through things, we kind of try to figure out how we're going to finesse our way into people not knowing that things are, things are wrong. Instead of just saying, this is my life. This is real now, you know? And so now I had to go to school smelly i couldn't front anymore you know it, it wasn't just no shave november i didn't have fresh clothes and fresh kicks and so i really just had to embrace it i think for a while in the beginning i really just tried to pretend for so long and then at that moment it was like no this is this is real mm -hmm. so i think a lot of times in life we try to kind of put band-aids on our problems or issues and, and instead of for instance the instagram era right instead of actually being successful or like moving out of our mom's basement or whatever we put so much energy and time into the presentation of not looking like that's the situation instead of putting the energy and time into actually finding a solution to that issue and so at that point it was like okay I've been putting a lot of time and effort trying to pretend things are good instead of actually trying to find solutions. And then that's when I started to do everything I needed to do to try to make money and just really, when I say embrace, it's not necessarily like accept it for what it is. It's almost like, okay, this is real. I need to figure this out. You kind of take in your surroundings, you take in the people around you, you see how they're making money. And I just didn't like begging people for money. And so I respected the guys that were like figuring out hustles, right? And so, for instance, there was a, a Amico right down the street from me. And so I would go there and I would wash windshields and make money, just try to save up enough money to just be in a motel for the night. And I mean like the nastiest motel, but for me, it was just taking in my environment, seeing how other people hustled, how I can do it better. Um, someone taught me how to play drums on buckets and things like that. And so, you know, I just tried to do any type of hustle 
um, that I could to, to kind of make things happen. And you kind of learn like a lifestyle. It's like, oh, I'm going to school dirty. No, go to the gas station, go use the bathroom, use the soap in there, use the paper towels in there, clean yourself up. You figured out ways to kind of hustle. Like the way I discovered tech was that I used to go into the local, I never went to the library. And I'm like, whoa, this place is open till eight and it's warm and it has computers and internet. What? Who never, no one told me about this. And so I just started to learn how others were moving and kind of adapted um, throughout. I grew up not having anything, you know? And so to see these guys with the nice jewelry, the nice cars, the newest Jordans and things like that, not saying that they were spending their money on the right things, but it showed me that my family and a lot of people around me had just accepted a certain level of mediocrity that was generational. And so for me, I looked at them as, wow, if you have the motivation to do something for yourself and make something, right? And so for me, it showed me how you can separate yourself from the pack and, and really run things the way that it should be. It's the roads that grew from concrete, right? It's like, no matter how terrible a situation is, no matter how bad it is, there's still gonna be a rose that grows from that concrete. And I feel like I was that, right? No matter what my situation was, I was built for this. I was not going to let myself fail, right? And I had that mentality. And I understand that now that I grew from that concrete, I'm starting to plant my seeds and there's more roses growing. Right? I remember being in the library and I discovered Mark Zuckerberg and I've told this story a um, hundred times. The part I haven't talked about often, um, and I don't know why, is that when I discovered Mark Zuckerberg, yes, I was inspired to be an entrepreneur and be in tech, but I said, I can't do that. I'm not some white kid from the Northeast with a Harvard education. I can't do that. But you know who I discovered? Q, rest in peace. Q from World Star Hip Hop. Now, however you may feel about World Star, right? Q was a guy that looked like me from the hood, no formal education, no background in tech or the digital space. And he built this super viral, profitable website. And at that moment I said, oh, I can do it too. You have to be able to show people that there's other options and that's what Spreading Seeds is all about. Showing people that they can actually do something different. I think Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is something that you can work on. So for me, it's, it's opening your mind and opening yourself to people. I think a lot of people, they are ignorant. They are like rejecting change. Travel, get out of your comfort zone. Meet people from all different types of backgrounds. If you wanna build a product or service or company that you wanna build at scale, and your friends are only the homies that you've been hanging out with since you know middle school probably should meet some more people get to know them travel the world you know and even if you don't have the resources to travel the internet learn about different cultures learn about different people i think what's so special about the internet now is really anything you want to do you can learn like if you want to learn how to code if you want to be a developer you want to build software you want to build apps you can literally go on youtube and learn how to code. And so what I would tell that person is, what do you want to do? Tell me anything. What do you want to do? Now, there's resources and there's things online that can help you build yourself into whatever that is. So I think that that kid at the end of the day, he has to have that kind of just, mm, I got to make this happen. Here's the thing. No one can teach you that. No one can, no one, no one can, I can, you know, they say what, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it or, but yeah, you can't do that. And that's the one thing I've learned through my time mentoring people, through giving people advice. I feel like we all have that friend that is always hitting us up for advice and then never fucking takes our advice. And so at the end of the day, that person has to take that last leap. You're at that computer, you tell me what you want to do. I tell you, this is how you search. This is, this is how you find those resources. Now you gotta actually go and learn. I am inspired by helping people. If I can make money too, damn, that's cool too, right? But 
the thing that really gets me out of bed right now is my ability to help people. I don't need any more money. I don't need any more material things. And, um, you know, it feels good temporarily, but it doesn't really hold any weight or substance. And so the thing that I feel like our legacy is how do we affect as many people as possible in the most genuine and impactful way, right? And for me, that is what drives me today. The, the biggest thing that I want to do is help people get to their place of peace. Okay. Getting to their place of peace, for a lot of people, financial freedom is a big part of that. I tell people all the time, money doesn't make you happy, but it sure as hell helps you find peace. Because if you're in a space where you're constantly worrying about money, how are you gonna focus on what keeps you at peace? Right. And so for me, it's really getting to that core of what people are passionate about, what brings them peace and, and financial freedom. I don't think you can just put so much pressure on yourself. I think like this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. Right. You never know when that moment is going to happen in your life where you're, you find that passion or you figure it out. The fun part is just trying a bunch of stuff. Like when you get to a point where you could just try a bunch of stuff, it's like, hey, sit down, make a list. I'm interested in all these different things, right? Okay, I'm interested in these top five things. Now, how can I do something that not only am I passionate about with one of these top five things, but also make at least enough money to just get by? I was recently thinking about how every company of mine has started and pretty much they all start the same way. Whether I consciously or subconsciously, subconsciously do this, I immerse myself within the target audience of that product or service, right? I see a lot of people that want to try to do something and they don't talk to people. They're like, oh, I think this is cool. And so they just start working on it. And the best way to learn is from other people, especially the people that you're trying to serve these products or these services to, right? And so for me, like I said, consciously or subconsciously, I've always emerged myself into that target audience, that culture, those people, um, and learn from them, have conversations with them, find out what they hate, what they love. And that was extremely important. And when you start to immerse yourself within this, right, you're going to want to do more research for like art. Being a young black guy in the, in the art space, shit doesn't happen, right? <laughs> it's not it's not a lot of us. Like the youngest art collector that I know outside of myself is Jesse Williams on like Grey's Anatomy. He's 37, right? You know, so he has like eight, eight years on me. So it's not a lot of people that I know. And I'm like, yo, why is that, right? And so it's just like this step by step process. And then when I think I find a solution to those problems, I go back to that target audience and I start saying, how do you guys feel about this? Or try this out. What do you think about this? I, it's such a collaborative experience. It's not just about you getting on the internet and just researching things. I think it's about talking to people and really bringing different you know, minds into the mix. At the end of the day, man, you really gotta want it. You got to really want it. And I think the problem is, is now with social media before, when I was growing up, I didn't see all these examples of people having cool cars or doing cool shit all the time. Like, right. And now with social media, I don't care if you're in like, you know, in the bump middle of nowhere, you can log on to Instagram and see just this whole world of experiences and things. The problem is, it's like, oh, well, these people have it. So I should be able to have it. And it's just like, man, you don't see the work that goes behind this, man. I started my first marketing job at 14. I'm 10 years into entrepreneurship. It wasn't until the past few years where I started really getting recognition for it, right? And so people don't see all that it takes to even get to that point, and that's the problem. And so they think it's supposed to be this, this overnight thing. Goes, oh, I started an LLC, give me money. Right. No, that's not how it works. You really gotta love it. So. I got ahead of myself and, and I had this idea for ArtX, which was formerly called Art Noir when I was gonna launch it. And I, last summer, so almost getting to a year year now, I was like, oh, I'm launching this in a couple weeks. Dude, I don't know as much as I should. So I took a step back and I said, I, I'm so glad I did not launch that company then. Cause you know, you get excited and all that. And 
I know so, I took a year of learning. Just learn a space, get to know people, figure things out. Because even though I had been in this space for a little while, I was more intentional about it. Before it was, okay, I'm just here because I love art and so I've been meeting these people and learning about this and this is what's needed. But then I said, no, I wanna be intentional about doing this. And so I shifted my energy, I shifted my time and I really got into it. And it's also something that I love to do, right? And so, yeah, did I miss out on revenue? Did I miss out on you know making more money in 2018 and all this other stuff? Yeah, of course, yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm going to launch a much more successful business when I do launch it. And it's because I took the time to learn. And I just think that people are in such a rush to have something, especially money. Money is like, oh, I gotta get more money. But it's like, if you launch something that's piss poor or shitty, and even at a point where I had accomplished so many things, I almost did it, right? We're not perfect. I'm not perfect, you know, I still f all the time, man. So we, we mess up constantly, but it's, it's identifying that and saying, wait, let me take a step back and let me do this the right way. What's one change that people could make in their life that would have the biggest impact on improving their life? Confronting mental health. Like it's, it's, it's honestly been something that has absolutely changed my life. Taking a few years back, I was VP of marketing of a company called Qualaru. Um, we had also um, co-founders company called Growth Hackers and I was working on my marketing firm. So I'm juggling three companies. I'm working 20 hours a day, something crazy. I just wouldn't enjoy life at all. And I had gotten to this crazy deep depression like, I hated myself, I didn't like my life, I got separated from my family because I was so focused. It's just like, you know, and it got to a point where I've never actually admitted this on camera. Um, you ever like miss that call from your mom or you miss, and then it turns into a week. And then you start to feel this like anxiety because you know it's been so long since you talked to that person. And it literally would be like a month and I wouldn't have talked to my mom, you know? And it's, it's because like, I don't know what to say. Like I've literally been so stressed out and you just isolate yourself. And I was in such an awful place. And, and it's juxtaposed by people singing your praises. It is the weirdest phenomenon in life when you're a public figure to have people saying how great you are and you fucking feel awful. And it got to a breaking point where my work started to suffer. You know, my relationship started to, to break. And I just said, you know what, what is this? What, what, you know, I gotta figure this out. I grew up in a place where depression was not, I don't even know if I knew what the word depression was. Like outside of like the fucking DMX album, The Great Depression, like I don't know if I ever really knew what depression was. And, um, you know, it was taking me taking that initiative to like, I need help. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm feeling. And I need to figure this out. And it saved my life. I don't know what would have happened to me, right? The thoughts that were crossing my mind, the ways that I was feeling. And um, I think a lot of times the thing that's stopping us from being the person that we truly want to be is ourselves. It's usually ourselves. And I think being able to identify mental health, depression, anxiety, all these things that we're dealing with and say that we want to make a change and we humble ourselves to want to make that change is one of the biggest barriers that one can break through.